All right, so we've heard from a couple of our morning speakers that doing laparoscopy, particularly in the pelvis, is something that can be challenging uh, and fraught with difficulties. So particularly with some of the new information that we have, which I'll get to in the course of this talk, uh, I'm going to talk about should we really be doing laparoscopy in the pelvis, or should we switch to open? These are my disclosures. So we heard from Dr. Lee that colon, laparoscopic surgery for colon cancer, in, in difference from rectal cancer, is now very well accepted and considered the standard of care. And by well accepted, this is a study out of Dr. Stamos's group in Irvine, that really only about half of surgeries for colon cancer are done laparoscopically in the United States today. So certainly some room for improvement, some data out of the national inpatient sample. We certainly have gotten better with time. You can see here the rates of adoption of laparoscopic surgery for colon cancer uh, improved over time, but still really only about half of surgeries are done that way. There's proven benefits with both short-term and long-term outcomes, and we've had numerous randomized controlled st uh, studies that have shown that the short-term outcomes are certainly better and the long-term outcomes are at least as good, possibly better, than open surgery. So there's really no longer any question that for colon cancer, laparoscopic surgery is the way to go. And it should be considered the preferred technique. This is, again, some of that data that, we that I talked about uh, from randomized controlled trials. You can see cost, classic, uh, and color studies. Um, and you can see here on the uh, local recurrence, the, um, local recurrence and uh, disease-free survival that they're very similar. And I'll point out one thing for the color trial, that although the differences in survival are not statistically significant, you can see the asterisks here, that the 95% confidence interval, and this was a non-inferiority study, the 95% confidence in interval exceeded the predetermined non-inferiority boundary but the conclusions of that trial were still that the authors felt that give, even given this, the data suggested that, in their opinion, laparoscopy was still safe and, and equivalent to, to open surgery. So that'll become important as we get to some of the, the most recent studies. Another thing to consider about a lot of these early randomized trials in laparoscopic surgery is to enroll patients in those trials. You only needed about 30 cases of experience before you were allowed to do that. And we know from other data that the learning curve for laparoscopy can be as high as 50 or even 100 cases. So a lot of surgeons that may have been enrolling case patients in those trials might not have been beyond their learning curve for laparoscopic surgery. So even despite that, the data are pretty